At that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then, turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. <clears throat> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, there was a meeting of all the great CEOs of the most successful corporate companies in France some years ago. There were 15 managers who were gathered and they were going to be addressed by a professor who uh, was in the, the uh, it was for a long time teaching management. And he decided to start his session with an illustration which many of us might be familiar with, but the application is different. The topic that he was addressing to the managers was efficient time management. And uh, he, uh, at the start of his session, he took out a jar from under the table and then a bag of uh, big stones. And then he filled the stones into the jar and asked the people gathered there, is it full? And most of them said, well, not completely. Maybe you can fill it more. And so he takes out another bag of small pebbles and he shakes the jar and he fills in the little pebbles in the gaps between the big stones. And then he asked them, is it full? And they said, okay, getting on to his idea, they said, no, most probably not. And so he takes out another sack with sand and he fills up the gaps between. Then he asked them, is the jar full? They said, mm, it looks full, but... Uh, Maybe you have some other trick up your sleeve. And so he takes a mug of water and he fills in the, the gaps with water. He asks the managers gathered there, what lesson do you think that you can take from this experiment? And one of the managers says, I think what we can learn is no matter how packed our schedules are, we can always fit in a few more meetings, a few more appointments and get a lot more work done. And the professor said, wrong. What we learn from this experiment is that unless you put the big stones first, you will not have space to put the other things in. It's about priorities. The season of Advent is a, a time that, that the church gives to us to assess our priorities in life. Have we become so busy with our day-to-day -day activities that we have drifted away from God, that we have failed to make time for God, for personal prayer in our own individual lives, or as a family. Have we neglected to make God a priority? In the Gospel passage of today, Jesus praises the Father for these disciples of His and the few others who had gathered around to listen to Him. They could have been anywhere and doing anything at that time. But they chose to follow Jesus, to hear his word, to be close to him, because they sensed that God was with them in Christ. And that is what fills Jesus with joy, knowing that these people have made him a priority in their life. Why should we Christians pray? Prayer is the lifeblood of the disciple of Christ. And it is in prayer that we receive Christ's spirit, the spirit of wisdom and counsel and fortitude and prudence and all the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. When we stick close to Jesus, 
He gives us His Spirit. And then we will see that when we make Him our priority, everything else in our life will begin to fall in place. Even if we go through difficult moments, challenging moments, we will go through those moments with a, an overwhelming sense of peace and contentment because we have our priorities right. We know that apart from all the other things that we could achieve in this world, the most important thing is to stick close to God, who is the end and the beginning of our life. Let us be, uh, use this season of Advent to renew our desire for prayer. Yesterday, we heard about the faith of the centurion. And so the church reminded us about the importance of faith, faith in the promises of Christ. Today, perhaps we are being told that prayer is an important way in which we express our faith. Let us ask God for the grace to persevere in prayer even when we feel dry, even when we feel that it doesn't make any sense. But prayer definitely does not change God. It changes us when we are filled with His Spirit. Amen.